Peace, peace, peace. Good day, guys. Yours truly, Rob Diaz. Your certified holistic health coach, certified herbalist, bachelor's of science, educational health and wellness studies, alternative medicine, 15 years combined experience with the use of botanicals, plants, agriculture, and understanding community herbalism with a greater approach to clinical herbalism from an individualized approach to treating individuals doing no harm with the use of evidence-based research, credible evidence-based research. Guys, I understand that right now we have a lot of people who are advocating for herbal medicine. However, all they did was pick up a little book, 10 pages, looked at some pictures and started selling you dry herbs and teas. This is not how herbal medicine works. There's a lot of things to take into consideration. I have so much to say, but I need you guys to really focus and check out some of my videos on YouTube to get the details around understanding the benefits of herbal medicine, um, the risk factors, understanding the toxicity, understanding um, if someone may be at risk for a potential hazard with a constituent of a plant. So we have to first understand before someone is an herbalist, if they have no endowment of understanding, enlightenment of understanding plants, nature, botany, they're going to look through the window of agriculture with herbalism with a very, very fine tooth comb. They're not gonna see the bigger picture. And I can say as a herbalist, qualified and certified, okay? As a business owner who promotes herbal medicine that plants are not primarily here for humans, okay? It's very important to understand that plants are not primarily here for humans. Their constituents and their different chemicals and metabolites are there to keep them alive. It's part of evolution when we understand the bigger picture of science, guys. It's very important to understand that. Secondly, we have identified as humans, we have identified as a people, as the human type, homo sapiens that we can utilize. We can benefit from these plants when they're in our body because they react with our metabolic chemistry. Very important to understand that. I have so many people I witness in social media, through the internet, clients that tag me, hey Rob, what do you think about this herbalist using this plant? What do you think about this healer using this remedy? And a lot of times I don't have thoughts beside you need to think about your intuition. You need to think about your instinct. You need to think about your mind space and what it's telling you because you will get the answer you're seeking. I understand people want to have professional advice. I understand people want to have a third party opinion based on someone like myself who has the qualifications, but you have to listen to your gut instinct. You really do when it comes to the use of herbal medicine. This is not a play medicine. This is not a replacement for pharmaceutical drugs. This is not, I'm going to try to replicate what my ancestors did. Yes, we can use some remedies for our spiritual wellness and balancing. But when you're dealing with a person who has a chronic disease that modern medical system has labeled and separated, and that person is dying before you, you understand the difference between playing with remedies and doing credible evidence-based research, treating the individual person rather than trying to treat the symptoms. A lot of people don't understand that herbal medicine is not to treat symptomology, but because most people don't have the prerequisite understanding of education. They never taken a course in basic human anatomy and physiology. They want to talk about how, well, that's the devil's work, how that's the white man's information. You are putting yourself in a position to do more harm when we're supposed to be in a position to do no harm, just like doctors swear the Hippocratic Oath. But in alternative medicine, we also believe in the Hippocratic Oath of doing no harm, because why would you harm someone to make them better? That is not logically sensible. There's many, 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 many remedies, many folk medicine culture traditions and practices that I've taught people and mentioned, but this is not a substitute for us to not take care of ourselves or utilize safe and effective non-toxic supplements, vitamins, minerals, herbs, botanicals, and everything in between. That matters, the quality matters, and having something that somebody says is good for you that's actually toxic 
is a problem. This is why we've been in a gray space with herbal medicine for so many years. And I advocate for herbal medicine guys in many different spaces. It's very important to understand that. I'm looking at a reference book here and it talks about factors affecting toxicity in humans. And some of the things people will tell people to do can affect this because your genetics plays a role, right? Age, dietary habits, um, your body's ability to absorb internally and externally, that all matters, right? So let's, let's think about people who have diseases. Let's think about population diversity, which most people don't know, realizing, okay, when you look at a certain ethnic group of people, what is the number one disease that's affecting them based on evidence and proof, not what you think? So we could look at Asians, we could look at African-American, we could look at Pacific Islanders, Caucasian, Latino, and all the different races and see, okay, this is what affects this. When we look at the African-American community, we understand metabolic diseases, metabolic disorders, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, hypertension. Most people dealing with hypertension in the African-American community end up having some issues with their kidneys because that is one of the side effects of this metabolic illness that occurs in this ethnic-based function. When we look at other ethnicities, we see other things that they are affected by, like maybe having aneurysms or clots as a result of the hypertension. So you have to first understand what is happening within the community of the people who you are working with before you begin to suggest and recommend and do a one-size treatment, as I say. No cookie-cutter approach to herbal medicine. It's not a one-size-fits-all. So you have so many people who are self-proclaimed herbalists, master um, scientists, and all this other nonsense. I haven't sat one day, one day, in a credible institution because they have it in their mind that they can't learn from someone who doesn't look like them, which is very ignorant, very ignorant. And they should not be in a position to work with people who are sick. They should be taking care of their mental health. But that's another topic for discussion. So it's important to identify these hazards, guys. I had someone who tagged me, okay, a lot of times on, hey, Congo, what do you think about this? And, and one thing I was tagged on was a very toxic plant Okay, it comes from the Caribbean. It's native to Mexico, Central South America, the West Indies, um, commonly called uh, contribo or flor de pato or uh, pelican flower, AKA scientific name Aristolcha grandiflora, which is a vine, which is very poisonous and toxic that has been used in folk remedies. So I have people who wanna argue about folk medicine and science. I, I don't do arguments. I don't do internet beef. I don't do social media beef. I present the facts, the evidence, and I educate. And it is up to you to make the decision to be wise and utilize what's meant for you. Again, this is a very important message. I want people to take time to understand the importance, safety, and efficacy of herbal medicine because we can do harm. And it is the dose, it is the dose that makes the medicine. Yes, you can take something that's poisonous and not necessarily have a reaction, but is that the same true for everyone? We are all unique in our genetic blueprint and DNA, and we must remember that. And we must not be treated by self-proclaimed individuals who claim they have a one size fits all. You will not get results. You will waste your time. You will continue to get worse. I'm not trying to be the negative Nelly I'm not trying to bring in any bad information, guys. I'm just trying to enlighten, educate, and share based on credible research, based on my experience through my certifications, qualifications with the Guild, having the time that I've taken over the years, hundreds and hundreds of hours of studies, being out in the field, witnessing and working with those who are sick in a clinical setting is different than having people come to you and asking for things and saying, hey, try this, hey, try this. That's, that's not effective. And that's not how this medicine works. And I want you guys to understand that there are toxicities with herbal medicine. There are plant toxins that will cause our organs to fail, especially when we talk about the African American community, AKA kidney failure. A lot of plants that we take as herbal medicine will be processed, metabolized through our liver and kidneys. And the kidneys cannot be restored. Okay? Yeah, there's people out there selling all kind of kidney um, supplements and you can bring... That's not true. 
Most people don't realize this because they're not getting their lab tests. They're not checking their blood levels to see what's happening in the body. So they have no idea. They're basing everything merely off of emotions and feelings. And if this is how you're taking care of your health, you're setting yourself up for a ticking time bomb of destruction. Please be smart, be wise guys, work with professionals. And remember what I first thing I said is follow and trust that instinct. If you need help, if you want to talk, if you want support, check out my website, natureroots.com. I will be more than happy to do the work to educate, to enlighten, which empowers you to make the decisions that you need to support your body. Remember, there are no healers that do healing. The healing is within you. You activate the healing. Peace. Good day.